originally I planned to do a prepping and packing video for this uh, last trip, but um, I actually thought it'd be a little bit more useful to do a kind of unpacking video. I know I could go through um, uh, what what kit was good, what uh, what wasn't, what I might change next time, um, and you can see how I packed that and, uh, and where it went in the bike. Now, forgive me if I come across a little bit uh, vague <laughs> uh, during this video. I only got back last night. I'm still pretty tired and obviously recovering. So, uh, you know, bear with me a little bit today. So the first thing I changed um, on the bike was the tyres. Um, I've got these 35mm uh, Conti Tour Ride tyres that I put on. I normally use the 28mm uh, that you can see on this bike here. I decided to go with the large ones because I felt I wanted a little bit more uh, comfort for the, the gravel. I'm not sure that exactly paid off. Don't get me wrong, these are great tyres. I mean, on the road, particularly they didn't really feel any different to the 28s on the gravel however i think and this was really my fault i don't think i was really running them um low enough pressure to really get the benefit of it and the much rougher gravel roads and frankly rocky double tracks which some of it was um i actually don't think you would have got any benefit from a tire probably less than maybe even a, a 40 mil um, kind of big proper gravel tire that was run at very low pressure. So yeah, I'm not sure there was any real downside going for these larger tires, but I'm not sure I had a huge amount of benefit from them. The other thing I put on here is a 1140 cassette that you can see here. Uh, it's in quite a state actually, needs quite a clean as does the whole bike. This cassette, was actually brilliant. I thought maybe it was going to be a little bit of overkill to start with, but when you're talking about a heavy packed bike, when you're doing at least three and a half thousand meters of climbing every day, being able to soft pedal even the really steep stuff made a huge difference. So another thing, now I didn't do this specifically for this trip. However, um, double bar wrap on here. Now, I think I really like having double bar wrap around kind of like this part of the handlebar. But when it comes to kind of really the tops and this section here, um, I'm not sure it's of that much benefit. Um, I found it was definitely um, good for when I was on the gravel, um, particularly descending on rough gravel. And in which case I was in the drops anyway. Um, so having a little bit of, of more padding there, great. On the tops here, it just makes the bar that bit sort of thicker and bigger and kind of unnecessarily. So I'm thinking of maybe rewrapping this soon um, and doing a, a, the bottom layer, maybe just going up to this kind of height somewhere around here um, and seeing how that goes. So just in terms of the cockpit, I um, was using a Garmin 800. Uh, sure, it's an old unit now, but I really like it. Um, I found them generally pretty reliable. Got a few caveats to that. I'll maybe talk about that in another video at some point. Lighting wise, I went with the uh, Exposure Revo. Um, and that's using the SP Dynamo Hub at the front there. Um, we've also got an exposure red eye, um, the exposure tracer, um, so I've got a flashing rear light, and I also have the Diablo as a helmet light there. All totally flawless, can highly recommend exposure lights, love their kit. In terms of like clothes I still had on when I got back, um, so I had a set of overshoes with me. Um, I don't really like overshoes, honestly, but I have real problems with keeping my feet warm. So uh, I, I kind of have to wear them. Um, I kind of felt this trip actually, that, that what I would have preferred were just some sort of toe covers for my boots, um, which I'd never really thought was something I ever wanted before, but I think I'm gonna get a set of those 
In terms of shoes, I was using the Northwave uh, Arctic. Uh, yeah, great. No complaints about those whatsoever. This is just an old on one base layer. Bought some new kind of light gloves recently. I tried out these Enduro ones. Um, they seem okay-ish, except you can see here that the the kind of um, the rubberized bit on here, considering these were really only a week old or something when I started uh, doing this trip, for those to already be rubbing off the palms of the hands. Yeah, questionable how good a quality that is. Uh, they were really comfy though. Pair of Cormac socks. Generally speaking, I sort of always like to wear a pair of uh, kind of fitted baggies over the top of um, any of my uh, bib shorts or whatever. So this this is just a pair from Decathlon, really cheap. <laughs> I've used these for a long time. Uh, been really hard wearing, really like them. Pair of Planet X three quarter length bibs. Now, generally speaking, these have been these had been great and they're comfortable and everything. But not only did like the zip at the front go, um, and I lost the 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 zipper. Then because I wasn't able to zip it up and they were kind of pulling apart whilst I was riding, they're even torn into the uh, into the fabric there. So yeah, pretty unimpressed by that. I'm gonna see what I can do about sending those back because I've only had those about four or five months now, I think. It was only last November I got them. So uh, pretty unimpressive. Um, okay, so we've also got like a Morvello uh, long sleeve top there. This was actually the first time I wore this. Um, hadn't uh, hadn't had a chance to to, to wear it there before that. Uh, really like it. Really super comfortable. Nice and um, nice and warm for when it got chilly. Pretty breathable as well. Like really happy with that. Um, another more velo uh, little uh, kind of wind gilet. Um, was really pleased with this as well. Packs down really tiny. Um, you know, you can easily get that into a back pocket or just like tuck it in your frame bag. That's where I, the other place I kept it. Um, and again, that's a great little layer just to kind of quickly slip on for a big descent. Or if the temperature's just dropped a little bit in the evening, then you know, it's good for that as well. Last but not least, uh, the best cycle cap that exists in the world over. Stop being soft, a mantra for all rides. Okay, so in terms of bags, now I'm not actually gonna go down into like the DL around the luggage itself. I'm gonna do another video on that at some point, um, but how it was packed. So initially then we'll start with the uh, the top tube bags. That's a restrap top tube bag. So, I would use this, um, I guess, mostly for kind of electronics based stuff. So I have a little dry bag here. That's got um, uh, GoPro battery, spare uh, SD card for the camera. It's got um, all the US, different USB cables I might need for charging, that sort of thing. Extra little uh, boost battery for the GPS to make sure I wouldn't be running out of battery on the long ride well I've got one bar left in there. I had that stuffed full of bars anything I just wanted to eat whilst I was on the bike would go in there so just in terms of the front bag which is an ace pack bar bag by the way So in here I'll be keeping like um, kind of a mixture of, a, of stuff really and, and this is probably the bag that I'd use mostly as a kind of a, just anything I wanted to stash as I was riding along. Um, so a pair of winter, big winter gloves, these are the um, uh, grip grab uh, kind of lobster glove. I did a written review of these on the blog so check that out. Got another, another cycling cap, this is a much thicker warmer one so I'd normally wear, wear that for like heavy rain uh, or in the evenings once it's got cold. Zero tabs, had a tube of those so I could just uh, try and keep up with the electrolytes. And that's a um, tube of chamois cream. Now I actually started off with a big pot of ASOS stuff because that's what I normally use. 
um, but I ran out. I had to pick up more whilst I was away. Um, I actually ended up buying uh, the ladies version of this because all they had in the uh, the bike shop that I popped into was um, a men's one of this size and a ladies one and no more so I picked them up both uh, didn't seem to be any difference between the two as far as I was concerned um, antibacterial wipes uh, that was so I could basically give the old undercarriage a clean if I was uh, reapplying chamois cream um, because, uh, yeah, just really trying to keep the hygiene down there, good, trying to stop the saddle sores. A uh, little pot of antibacterial soap and antibacterial hand gel. Um, I probably normally wouldn't carry that, but given current times, I thought it best to be real careful on that front. Last thing you want to do is get sick uh, when you're out on the road. Some tape for me ankles to try and tape up my Achilles a bit just in case I was going to get any problems with blisters. Finally, two Ziploc food bags. So I always carry two of these um, empty. Um, the point of that being that if you find yourself in a situation where maybe you're buying food to cook later, often it's going to come in packaging that's like way bigger than you actually want to fit in any of your bags so you can just kind of decant it to that particularly good for things like fresh pasta because uh, like four or five minutes to cook but tends to come in kind of a big plasticky uh, sort of bag in this particular instance I used these on the at the end of the first night when I went in the pub and bought pizza um, I only wanted to eat half the pizza so I ate half of it let the other half go cold put the slices in these bags, stuck it in my front bag there, ate the other half of the pizza when I got to the hostel. Okay, so in terms of what's in the, the main pack, at the back, this is another ace pack uh, bag. So um, that's the Columbia Out Dry uh, waterproof. So that's like a really heavy duty waterproof. The only reason I decided to pack this was the weather that was predicted for Sunday was going to be like really heavy rain for most. Of, well, I think it went from kind of moderate to heavy rain on and off all day. Um, and I decided I wanted a little bit, uh, you know, something a bit more substantial. Um, actually, the rain didn't end up being that uh, heavy on that day all day, but I wore it anyway, and I was thankful for having it. Um, I think if I was going for a super light setup, because uh, this really isn't a super light setup at all. But if I was going for a super light setup, I wouldn't have bothered with this. A pair of Endura waterproof shorts as well. Exactly the same thing I would suggest as the um, the out dry. It was nice to have this time, but again, in a light setup, I wouldn't have bothered with those. Uh, leg warmers. Um, that was just a mistake. Just overpacked with that. Uh, yeah, shouldn't have bothered at all with those. A plugs here for making sure I get uh, stuff charged. So the one this uh, this one being able to charge four USB devices at once from one plug, real handy. Um, can highly recommend getting hold of one of those if you're going to be doing any sort of stops where you can uh, get to a plug socket. Even if you think that might only be in a cafe or whatever, being able to do four at once, really useful. I also basically accidentally packed my phone <laughs> um, charger as well. That was just uh, stupid at packing error, really. So then we got my spare set of riding gear. So this was another long sleeve top. Um, this is a is it Galibear, Jalibear, Galibear. I don't know. I really like this one. Um, kind of similar to the Morvello, really slightly more relaxed cut. 
warm when it needs to be, breathes enough when you when you want it to. So this is another pair of the Planet X three quarters. This pair actually didn't fall apart on me, so you know, great and everything, but I don't think I would ever see myself buying another pair of these. Another pair of Cool Max socks. A Rab Down uh, jacket. Um, now this pack's down pretty small as you could see. Uh, this has always been one of my mainstays for when I'm bivvying because you always want a nice warm off the bike jacket but also then it can double up as an extra layer to sleep in so that you can uh, take a lighter sleeping bag. I almost certainly didn't really need this this trip at all. I mean, I could have left this at home quite easily and not noticed any difference. I did wear it, but it was a luxury item. If I was going to do hostels and that again as a trip, I probably just wouldn't bother with that. So this is just a set of thermal base layers. Um, and this was what I slept in. Um, packs down nice and small is way warmer than you might imagine for how lightweight it is and how small it goes down to these are actually really uh quite warm like so uh these are actually as well just a real cheap i don't even i don't even know what mate they are like they were just out of a bargain bin from a um a uh like somewhere like millets or blacks or whatever just a mainstream kind of outdoor shop but um they've actually been really good I think they were only about 15 quid or something for the pair. Lastly then we've got the frame bag. Frame bag is custom straight cut designs um, bag. Uh, it's been flawless so far. Again, I'll do a proper review of that at some other point though. So what have we got in here? So I've got a couple of kind of neoprene ankle gaiters. Now, I did wear these, these tr this trip. Generally speaking, I really like to use these because I wear three quarter lengths with my boots. Um, I'll wear these over the top of the boot. So when the rain runs down your leg, this seals around the top of it. And um, yeah, it means the water doesn't run into the massive hole in the top of your waterproof boots. Now these work really well. I mean, I probably could have got away with not wearing these, these this time, maybe. In the front compartment there, we've got a Gore-Tex shake dry. Um, now, I really like this top as a, as a packable waterproof jacket. I think this is certainly the best that I've ever had. Really lightweight, breathes well, packs down nice and small, pretty good in terms of waterproofing uh really pricey and expensive though and also the fact that it's so low what low weight and sort of lightweight fabric i don't think it's going to survive a, a crash or whatever so you know take from that what you will arm warmers uh standard bit of kit really spare garmin um so yeah, you know, look, you're scuppered if your if your GPS dies, right? So I've I've got two. You know, you know what? I've actually got three. I only carry two with me, but I've actually, I've actually got three eight hundreds. These are super cheap on eBay at the moment, by the way. Um, that's why I've got so many of them because I picked up a bunch to make sure I got spares for the future. Okay, then after that, it's tools and maintenance stuff. So ceramic uh, lube. I'm running tubes, so I've got puncher repair kit. This is an old puncher repair kit uh, box. In there I've got some spare brake pads. I've got some quick links in case the chain breaks. Um, sensible little things to have with you, really. A uh, little set of uh, hex keys. Chain breaker. Uh, we've got some uh, tyre levers and stuff there. Uh, <laughs> five tyre levers. <laughs> Tube. Another tube, mini pump, um, although it's not that mini, this one. I probably need a new one of these, actually. Uh, a smaller, lighter weight one would probably be quite good. Last but not least, that's a uh, spare mech hanger. I guess, yeah, two Camback Podium water bottles, 700 mils each. So I hope you found this video uh, maybe interesting and useful. And um, yeah, join me for the next video that I do on the channel.
Cheers.